Okay, the, the purpose of our meeting today is to explain uh, the technical nature of why and how the rebuilder works. Um, we know it works, it's used all over the country, all over the world actually, but um, part of my training, postgraduate training for uh, MDs and chiropractors to get a board certification in neuropathy, this is one of the things that, that I teach. So I thought it would be good for you guys. So you're actually getting a postgraduate crash course yeah. in uh, how nerves really work. Um, you may know that I've recently completed my own MD uh, program and in order to pass it, I had to answer questions on tests that weren't true because <laughs> they're 10 to 15 to 20 years behind the textbooks. And of course, I've been doing this for 40 years. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how nerves work. You have a cell body here and you have what's called a dendrite. This is the incoming part of the cell. It picks up messages. <clears throat> and these messages travel this direction. It goes to the cell body, which is like a computer. It decides if what we're feeling is a, the inside of our shoe or a sharp piece of glass or a nail. And it decides if it sh should bother sending it uphill to the brain or not. That's the function. Also, his function is to keep the rest of the cells, the rest of this part of the cell alive. Now, in its outgoing, this is called an axon. And if it decides that it's important, then it sends a message to the axon. Now, these nerves in your body don't touch one another. They just get close. So the next nerve is the same thing. This is its dendrite and its axon. So you stimulates down here, sends electrical signal to the cell. Cell decides if it's important enough. It goes to here and they don't touch. This is called a synaptic junction. Now that synaptic junction Let's make it real big here. Is actually a fluid filled sac. And this signal has to jump across this electrical signal. Now, distilled water, pure water, does not conduct electricity, only dirty water. It has to have minerals. So, depending on how conductive this synaptic junction is, determines whether or not the cell wall get, the signal gets across. Now classic neural education says that you have neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters are chemicals like dopamine, serotonin, caffeine, epinephrine, and that they are released here and they have a particular shape. Let's make this one a triangle, okay? <laughs> and that this shape migrates over to here, and this has a triangle hole, and it migrates over here and searches. Uh, there's thousands of these dendrites, but it searches each one of them. You can pull a hole, looking for the exact geometric shape of this molecule and it transfers information and it continues on up to the brain. Well, that's ridiculous. Number one is way too slow. Number two, how long does it take to travel around and find a geometric shape that matches it? So that's, that's dopamine and, and serotonin is square and something else is star shaped. Now, it, that's, that's what they say. That chemicals transmit information. Chemicals do not transmit information. Radio waves, electromagnetic impulses uh, send information. But what these neurotransmitters do, so that when you inject 
these neurotransmitters into a body and it gets absorbed is it it changes the conductivity of this synaptic junction so it either makes it more conductive or less conductive and it'll also act as a filter so that if a signal is coming down here and it's going this direction and it's a pain signal then it can act as a filter so that that doesn't get through that's all it does then you refer to serotonin reuptake inhibitors and serotonin reuptake well what happens when it gets over here does it fill up so they say what happens is it comes back over here and gets reabsorbed well all that takes time so it does do those things but very very slow when you take a pill drink a cup of coffee it doesn't first sip sniff or taste doesn't jack you up right away it takes five or ten minutes to, to work that's why because it's a slow process so it goes across now what does carry that information it's a wave form if you look at an oscilloscope and Frank Sinatra sings my way goes, I did it my way it'll have a particular shape now when I sing it I'll go I did it my way okay. now I've got the same relative voltage I've got the time frame pretty much the same except I stretched mine out but he makes money seeing that and I don't <laughs> okay now, now if you sing it as a woman I did it my way. pretty accurate okay your, your voice is higher and you have a different style so you and I don't make any money singing it but now each of these carries the information okay when you talk into your telephone you move a little diaphragm which moves in and out of an electromagnetic field and changes this and that gets sent either through a hard wire or through radio waves hits another little coil converts it back into electricity and then you can play it and you can amplify it or turn it down call the radio or your telephone so it's, it's information is transferred by a wave shape. Let's erase this. <coughs> so when this comes across here, it comes across in the form of a wave. A lightning, when it strikes, is instantaneous. When you step on a nail, it's instantaneous and you move away. So as an example only here let's say that this is a carrier wave for the nerve now if you turn the radio dial to 98.6 that's a specific frequency it's a carrier wave now, on top of that is that other wave to determine whether you're listening to Barbara Streisand or you or me or the radio announcer or the weather report but the carrier wave has a particular wave and if you turn to 98.7 you don't hear anything anymore you don't hear any of the singers because you've changed to the carrier wave now let's say this is a carrier wave for a nerve what you find is that sometimes that wave looks like this it's out of shape right here that's pain that tells the brain if it receives a signal like that that that's pain or it could receive a signal like this and 
That's numbness. So this is numbness. It says I'm missing something. Here, it says pain. It's additional energy outside the line. This is a deficit of energy in the line. Now, there's a lot of other things. Which toe? <laughs> How bad? If it really is numb, it might look like this. If it's just a little numb, it looks like that. If it looks like this, it's your little toe. If it looks like this, it's your big toe. Okay? All kinds of information is in the waveform, which is my point. It's not in the chemicals. It's in the waveform. So what the rebuilder does is when he first turned the rebuilder on, unlike other devices, it measures several parameters of the body. Just like if you get about a bathroom scale, the new modern digital ones, it'll not only give you your weight, but it'll give you your percentage of body fat, your percentage of water. We measure those things. We measure the conductivity of the body. There's a certain resistance. Um, there is, uh, the body has its own uh, electricity, its own battery, and it'll measure that. So it measures all these things, and it can tell the difference between a 90-pound woman and a 400-pound linebacker, and it sets its safety. So it could give more power to a 40-pound, 400-pound linebacker than it does to a 90-pound woman, no matter what you dial it. So it checks and sets it. Second thing it does is it sends a normal signal from one foot to the other, and it goes what we call in computer technology, goes dark, stops. Now when the signal goes from one foot to the other, the way the rebuilder is designed, electricity travels from one electrode to another. If you use the foot bath, the water becomes the electrode, and so it sends a signal from here up to the synaptic junctions of the lower back down to this foot, it stops. When it gets to this foot, the foot says, something just happened. I'm gonna tell daddy. I gotta send a message to the brain that I just got a little tingle here, and I don't know what this is, because I'm not doing anything but sitting here. So it sends a signal, and the signal could look like that. So the rebuilder listens now, and eavesdrops on that signal that this foot is sending to the brain in response to, to the rebuilder's natural waveform. And it says, whoa, look at that, that's not right. So it sends its next signal. First signal is normal. The second signal, it says, I need to send a signal that looks like this. And what that will do is balance out so it's like a, no, a Bose noise-canceling headphone. Now, it might do this, and it might only come up to there. So it sends a little bigger signal, bring it back down, or it might not do it enough. And, and so it keeps doing that. 7.8 times a second, it, re, it listens to what the signal's response is to its own signal, and it makes a corrective signal. 7.83 times a second. So the patient's electrical parameters will change during a 20 or 30 minute treatment cycle. And the rebuilder knows that. The patient's nerves will change between visits, between morning and afternoon and evening. So other devices don't measure anything about the body. It sends the same signal. Now what the signal of a TENS device is is this. So if you've got a headache and I stomp on your toe, you forget about your headache for a second. What that signal does is block any signal from getting across here, which means it, you have numbness. So a TENS device can create numbness. Uh, with a wearing a TENS device on your back, you step on a nail, you don't know it. Not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Numbness is not a good thing. 
this square wave is like a screech to the nerves. It's like if you've been on a highway and a 18 wheeler comes by and hits that horn a blast or a train, it'll startle you. It's not, it's foreign, it, it's unusual. The other thing is that when the nerve goes along normal and it sends the signal, it has to recover time before it can send another signal. That's why your heart beats and rests. That's why you breathe in and you stop. That's why you have a brain wave and it stops. That's why when you walk, you walk on one leg, this one's relaxing. You step on this foot, this one's relaxing. Everything is pulsed. The sun comes up in the day and goes down at night. So when you stimulate this and you send the signal down here, there's various ways of describing how the signal is done, but it takes time for everything to come back to normal before it can send another signal. By doing this 7.83 times a second, it gives a resting period. resting period between signals so the body can go back to normal before it sends another one. A TENS device, a 7.83, sends its square wave like this. Over and over again, it blocks it. As a matter of fact, what a TENS device does is this. Ninety hertz. Ninety times a second. So, if your heart beats at 70, 72, that's a good thing. If it beats at 150, it means you're running. If it beats at 200, it's called fibrillation. It can't pump. It has to have time to pump, relax, for blood to go back into that chamber to fill it. So if it hits too fast, it can't work. And that's the same thing that's going on with a TENS device, is that it sends a signal so fast that it not only distracts the brain, but it stops the, the ability of, of um, well, it just stops it. <laughs> it overloads it with a loud signal, and it goes so fast that it can't, recover enough to send another signal. So it blocks, creates numbness, and does all those things. Now, if you actually have somebody sawing off your, your leg because you got shot or something in the Civil War, tens device up here while they're sawing your arm off because a piece of your bone is missing might be a good thing. When you have go to the dentist, and he's going to drill you a tooth, temporary Novocaine might not be a bad thing. If you carry Novocaine the rest of your life in that tooth and your jaw is not such a good thing. Now, lightning strikes the earth because there's a difference in electrical potential. And that potential pulses, guess what frequency? 7.83 times a second. <laughs> called Schumann Natural Earth Resonant Frequency. People say that if they walk barefoot in the grass or at the beach in the water or play in the ground with the flowers, they feel better. They're grounded, they're connected electrically to the Mother Earth natural pulse. So that's another reason we use that. That particular frequency is very calming that particular frequency causes the brain to release endorphins. Endorphins are internally created opioids without side effects. Same chemicals as an opioid, but is manufactured by the body for that particular body at that particular time, so it doesn't have side effects. These opioids travel throughout the entire system, the blood system, travels all over the body, relaxes, solves a little bit of arthritic pain in the elbow, in the knee. We're treating the feet, let's say, or the hands, 
but it has a byproduct of that. So when they use this at night, before they go to bed, it causes them to relax and they'll go to sleep faster and stay asleep longer. As a side effect, as a side effect, when you are relaxed, it's not a time when you eat. We eat when we're nervous, <laughs> we'll munch. So many people wind up losing weight when they use the system, not for any other reason, but because they're feeling better. Now, whenever you're stimulating the nerves, they're gonna need more fuel. And the metabolic byproducts of nerves have to be removed. So when I'm stimulating the nerves 7.83 times a second, that's good, but it needs nutrition and some blood. So when you put your feet in the warm water, the warm water naturally vasodilates the capillaries. When the heart beats, if you cut an artery, it spurts every time the heart beats. If you cut an artery, a vein, it just dribbles out. Now, there's capillaries between the arterial system and the venous system. Some of them are only big enough for one cell at a time to get through. So when you vasodilate, it makes it open, more blood can get through. But if the veins are full, no place for the blood to go. The body has a different system to get the blood back up to the heart. That's muscle contraction. So the blood is down here in my feet. In order to get back up to my heart, my calf muscle has to squeeze and relax. And it's happening while you're sitting there quietly, but you're not even hardly aware of it. It squeezes it. Blood moves up towards my heart. It relaxes. Blood gravity brings it back down and a valve catches it. So you've heard of varicose veins. That's when those valves don't work so good. But normal people squeeze it, goes up. So every time you do it, it push, pushes it up. So when you empty that vein and you open up the capillaries from the warm water, then the arterial blood can go through the larger capillaries and fill an empty vein. So you get more blood flow. TENS devices don't do anything for the muscles. The Rebuilder has an EMS, electronic muscle stimulation component. So it does that. You have a third system of circulation in your body and it's a lymphatic. When you have a sore throat, your lymph glands get swollen all over the place. Breast cancer, they decide how far it's gone by if it's gone into your lymph nodes or not. It's a drainage system. So when the nerves need more fuel, they're gonna get it because of the muscle contraction. And as they burn up the fuel and give off metabolic byproducts, it's taken into the lymphatic system where it's moved by muscle contraction, doesn't have a heart, to the liver, the kidneys, to be released into the body, the urine and feces, sweat also. So you're feeding it, waking up the nerves, calming down overactive nerves, the pain, waking up underactive nerves, correcting numbness, increasing blood supply at the feet, also at the legs. We're removing toxins. Regular toxins that we're creating, but also there could be a buildup of toxins. When you have pain, you don't move very much and you can have what's called disuse muscle atrophy. The legs get smaller. So we're strengthening the legs. 7.83 times a second is the same speed as running down the road. So you get the equivalent exercise of running down the road without wearing out your knees and your ankles. Mm. So it strengthens that. Now, here's a foot, here's a leg, here's your spine, here's the other leg, here's another foot. One electrode is positive, one electrode is negative. It's in a split compartment foot bath. The only way for the signal to get from this electrode to that is to go up, across the synaptic junctions of the spine, back down to this foot. Then it reverses and goes the other way. Now let's suppose that at one time you hurt your knee and it became inflamed. 
swollen. Okay, puts pressure on it. If this nerve normally goes like this, it might decide to go around it. It's called collateral. You've heard of collateral circulation in the bloodstream. Sometimes this heals. But the old nerve path remains. So it takes longer for the signal to get from this foot to the brain in normal practice than this foot because it's longer route. So the rebuilder, electricity takes the shortest route, forces it to reestablish the correct nerve path. EMS devices don't do that. EMS devices don't do that. So sometimes you get a torturous path, it straightens it out. It's just what happens with electricity. Electricity, when you get lightning, doesn't go to the neighbor's house and your house and down, down, down the street, down, and then come and hit the ground. <laughs> it takes the shortest route as it can to get back to the earth. Now, the synaptic fluid needs to be conducted. Remember we talked about that? Fluid here, and we've got your, your dendrites here, your axon rather, and we've got the dendrites and the other one here, and you've got minerals. Now if this nerve cell, if this synaptic fluid isn't used very much, then these, uh, these uh, pieces of the, in, of minerals, in here that makes it conductive begin to leach out into the nearby blood supply. It takes energy to keep them in suspension. So if they're not being used, the body says the heck with it and it starts removing them and they go back into the bloodstream. Now once we start waking up the nerves by stimulating them, the body says holy moly. <laughs> I need to get more minerals back in here. So by stimulating the blood flow, we can put minerals back in here. And by having your feet in the water, vasodilates as capillaries. And you take a balloon and you make it larger, it gets thinner. It's easier for the minerals to go in and out. So in that fluid, you supply electrolytic fluid to put into each side of the bucket to make it more conductive. In there, it is loaded with minerals in the exact proportion necessary for the synaptic fluid sac. So, if you've got a bucket here with your feet in it, it absorbs the minerals from the bucket into the bloodstream and it reestablishes the conductivity of that synaptic fluid. TENS devices don't do that. The little pads, they put them in various places. They don't have the foot bath. So, the rebuilder wakes up sleeping nerves calms down overactive nerves. It reads the patient's body size for safety and sets itself. It evaluates the signal, the self-generated signal from the body and the foot and analyzes it and produces its own corrective signal, 7.83 times a second, which gives the cells, the nerve cells a chance to recover, gives the brain a chance to release endorphins. It absorbs minerals from the water so that it can feed and resupply the synaptic junction. It increases and strengthens the muscles by electrically contracting them. It increases the local blood supply that way. It helps clear out toxins because it's pushing muscle contraction, which pushes the toxins from the lymphatic system up into the body cavity. 
other than that, the rebuilder doesn't do very much. 